Hey everybody, Walter Resendez here with Axis Electric, and today I want to talk to you about Power Factor. Have you ever wondered what Power Factor is and how to calculate for Power Factor? Have you ever struggled with the math involved with understanding calculating Power Factor? Today I'm going to show you the easiest method I've found to calculate for Power Factor, so let's get right into the lesson. All right, calculating power factor. Let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to understand about power factor is we need to understand a little bit about right angle trigonometry. I know it sounds difficult, but it really it's really not that bad. We're going to look at a right angle triangle, and this is a right angle triangle. You can see it's a right angle by the 90 degree angle here. We need to understand what each side of the triangle is and what some of the trigonometric functions are. We don't, we don't need to know all of them, but we do need to know some of them. So let's get right into it. Here, this is the angle we are most concerned with when it comes to uh, electricity and power factor. We want to know what this angle is of a right angle triangle. So in, uh, in trigonometry, they call this the angle theta. So we'll just uh, continue to call it that. And everything we talk about is relative to this angle. This is the hypotenuse side of the triangle. It's the longest side. It's pretty easy to remember, the hypotenuse. This side is the adjacent side. The reason it's called the adjacent side is because it's adjacent to this angle. If this was the angle we'd be talking about, then this would be the adjacent side. But since this is the angle we're concerned with, this is the adjacent side. And the next side is the opposite side. It's opposite our angle. And so those are the three sides of the triangle, the hypotenuse, the adjacent side, and the opposite side relative to our angle. And then we have three trigonometric functions. We have the sine of the angle, the cosine of the angle, and the tangent of the angle. So there are more. There's, uh, there's the uh, cosecant and the cosine and the cotangent, but we're not going to worry about those right now. All, we need, all, we wor all we're going to worry about is the sine, cosine, and tangent. And thankfully, there's an easy way to remember the math associated with these angles or with these uh, trigonometric functions. And that's a mnemonic called SOKATOA. SOKATOA. Um, so what this stands for is the sine of the angle. So the sine, the sine of this angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So SOH, the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then there's the cosine, ka. The cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So, ka, and then finally toa, toa. The tangent is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So, ka, toa. If you can remember that mnemonic, you can remember almost all the math you're going to need to know to do uh, a right angle trigonometry which will go right into how to calculate power factor. There's a couple of more mathematical formulas we've got to worry about, but this is most of them. So the sine, again, the sine, the sine of the angle. So the sine of this angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. One other thing, and it's going to look complicated when it comes up on the screen, but it's really not. So right here, this is an example of Pythagoras' theorem, uh, which is basically c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That's, that's all it means. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. 
And so this is A. This is the A side of the triangle. This is B. This is C. So C equal e C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So here we have C squared, hypotenuse squared, equals the opposite, opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared. So to, in order to get this math, this is, uh, this is our formula. So in order to get the answer, we need to get rid of this square. So we do the square root of that, which cancels out the square. Whatever we do to this side of the equal sign, we have to do to this side of the equal sign. So we get the square root of this sum. So the square root of opposite squared, opposite side squared plus adjacent side squared. So that's Pythagoras' theorem on finding the length of the hypotenuse. So we can use, if we know any two values, the adjacent side, the opposite side, we can find the hypotenuse. If we know the hypotenuse and the adjacent, we can find the opposite. If we know the hypotenuse and the opposite, we can find the adjacent. So that makes, uh, Pythagoras' theorem makes our life a lot easier understanding right angle trigonometry. So there you have it, right angle trigonometry. Now, how does this translate into understanding power factor? Well, we need, to, we need to define some terms. So all our sides are going to mean something electrically. So here we go. Here we have our cosine, our sine, and our tangent. And we have our, our adjacent side. Uh, so if you look here, here's our right angle trigonometry. Our adjacent side is equal to real power as measured in watts watts the w you can think of the w the watts as the work being performed because that's exactly what wattage does it's the work being performed by by uh, electricity so here we have the real work being done the real power then the hypotenuse is called the adjacent the apparent power side or the hypotenuse is the apparent power which is measured in volt amperes volt amperes now you might be thinking well isn't isn't wattage and volt amperes the same thing well in a purely resistive circuit it is the same thing you might remember uh your power circle power circle where where watts equals volts times amps well here you have volts times amps and uh so doesn't watts equals volt doesn't don't watts equal volts times amps well uh in a resistive circuit they do but in this case we're not talking about a resistive circuit this is a triangle for an inductive circuit in an inductive circuit you have things like motors and transformers something with a coil that's being energized producing electromagnetism and when that happens it creates something called inductance and inductance creates something called inductive reactance. And so this side of the triangle is called our reactive power, or it's measured in VARs, uh, volt amperage reactance. So the reactive power of the circuit. All right, so we need to understand those things. Let's get rid of our power circle. And so I brought this circle up here to give you an idea of uh, what power factor is doing, what this reactive power is actually doing to our circuit. Um, if you measure this line right here as the work being performed, and that's exactly what it is, the work being performed, what apparent power is, is the work you're actually paying for. Uh, so this difference in the length of the line corresponds to the difference that you're paying for when it comes to no physical work is being performed with this amount, this power out here. So the, the worse your power factor is, the steeper this angle is, then the, the more wasted power you have that you're paying for. It's power you're paying for that's not performing any work. So... The object of power factor correction is to 
reduce the size of this triangle as much as possible or reduce your reactive power as much as possible so that you get as close to unity power factor as possible. That unity power factor would be if we reduce this line and we just had a straight line, which would represent uh, a resistive circuit. Um, but again, this is an inductive circuit. So the whole object of understanding power factor is to stop throwing away money. <laughs> it's to improve your power factor as much as possible so you can reduce the amount of waste in your circuit. So again, easy way to remember all this is Sokatoa. And again, the sine of the angle. So here, it, the sine of the angle was equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Here, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side measured in vars over the hypotenuse measured, measured in volt amperes. All right, next is the cosine of the angle. So the cosine of this angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side cosine would be equal to the watts over volt amperes. Okay, and then finally tangent. The tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So opposite over adjacent, the tangent of the angle is equal to vars divided by watts. And finally, you have Pythagoras' theorem again. And here we've replaced hypotenuse with volt amperes. We replaced the opposite side with vars. And we've replaced the adjacent side with watts. So there you go. This is how you transfer a right angle trigonometry into electrical terms to understand how to do the math for power factor electrically. All right, now the cosine of the angle is actually your power factor. It's your percentage of power factor. Um, and there you go. So you can understand what power factor is just like that. Uh, there's one other thing. You can understand the, uh, the angle the angle, whatever this, this angle is, is actually the inverse cos of the power factor. So if you know the power factor is 75%, then you can take 0.75, find the inverse cosine of 0.75, and you'll find the angle of this triangle. Okay? Great. All right. So there we go. Um, now... One other thing we need to remember, uh, so if we know, similar to our power triangle, so watts equals amps times volts, or watt, watts divided by volts equals amps, or watts divided by amps equals volts, uh, similar to that, we can make a power triangle from our right angle triangle. So we can find kilowatts equals volt amperes, times power factor, or power factor equals kilowatts divided by volt amperes. Volt amperes either equals kilowatts divided by power factor. So uh, we can use this helpful little tool to remember some of our other mathematical formulas we're gonna need to know. So now what I'd like to do is, is actually go to some examples of what we're gonna need to look at. So here we have an AC system. We, here we have an AC circuit. A, this is an AC power source. Uh, it's going through a circuit and returning to the power source. Uh, it has three motors, motor number one, motor number two, motor number three. And here we have an amp probe measuring the amperage that's running in the circuit. This, all these motors are connected in parallel and we're measuring the amperage of the entire circuit, okay? And here we have a future power correction which we'll go, to, we'll go into in another video. Right now, with this video, what I'd like to do is just focus on uh, how to calculate the power factor of these motors. So, unless you know how to measure uh, in polar um, and make 
add things in polar and 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 find the radians and all that unless you know how to do that i found the easiest way for electricians is just to create a triangle for each load so we're going to create a triangle for each motor in this circuit so for motor number one or actually we're going to have we have a couple givens for these motors so motor number one we know it's 10 horsepower and we know it has a power factor of 55 percent uh, motor number two we know that it, it it's generating 31 kvars of reactive power at an angle of 55 percent or 55 degrees i should say not percent degrees so we got 31 kvars at 55 degrees and finally, motor number three is a 10 kilowatt motor at an angle of 52 degrees. All right, so let's begin with motor number one with what we know. So here's our three triangles, and we're going to go to motor number one. We know that our power factor is 55%. We also know that a 10 horsepower motor, we know that one horsepower equals 746 watts. So, and if you didn't know that, um, check your Uglies book, uh, look it up on Google, I don't know, but it, uh, one watt or one horsepower equals 746 watts. So if it's a 10 horsepower motor, we know that it's 7,460 watts. All right, so we know that our we have a 7.46 kilowatt motor. All right, so we know what the bottom of our triangle is. Our bottom of our triangle is 7.46 kilowatts. Great, now we just need to learn or figure out what the other two sides of the triangle represents. So if we go here to our, our, uh, our little power triangle, our little uh, right angle triangle uh, power wheel, we can find that kilowatts divided by power factor equals KVA. So we know what our kilowatts is, 7.46 divided by, we know what our power factor is. So let's go ahead and do the math. 7.46 divided by 0.55 equals 13.55 KVA. So we can go ahead and add that in. Now, I'm going to add that in in yellow, and there's a reason for it. And I'll explain that reason when we get to the end. Uh, and we do, we're going to do one triangle that encompasses all three loads. So, and I'll show you why I left that yellow. Okay. So we know what two sides of our triangle is. We also know what the power factor is. So now we're going to need to know, we need to learn how, many, how much kVAR we have in the circuit. So we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to figure out what our kVAR is. So kVAR, we know that kVAR plus kilowatts, so our, our, uh, our opposite side divided by, or actually our opposite side squared plus our adjacent side squared equals our hypotenuse squared. So we're going to take our opposite side plus our adjacent side equals our hypotenuse. So we know what two of these values are and we need to figure out for the third. So we're gonna do a little um, algebra here. We're gonna move some things around in the, in the equation. And so we subtract, we're gonna subtract uh, uh, 7.46 from this side of the triangle, and we're gonna subtract, the, or not triangle, this side of the equation. We're gonna subtract it from this side of the equation. That gets kVAR all over here all by itself. So kVAR equals our hypotenuse minus our adjacent. So kVAR actually equals that squared. So um, to get rid of our squares, we square root this side, gets rid of the square, we have to square root this side. So kVAR equals 11.31, 11.31 kVAR. All right, um, so now let's move on to our second triangle we figured out all the sides of our first motor now let's start working on our second motor here we know that we have 31 kvar and an angle of 55 degrees so we're going to use our tangent function 
So tangent of the angle, which we know the angle is, is 55 degrees, is equal to our vars divided by our watts, or vars over watts, our opposite side over our adjacent side. Remember, tan, toa, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So vars over watts. So we can plug in the tangent of 55 degrees equals 31 kvar divided by our kilowatts. Now, we're going to measure it in kilowatts because this is 31 kvar. So it's measured in thousands. So 31,000 kvar, or 30, uh, yeah, 31,000 kvar divided by kilowatts. So we know, we know what the angle is. The angle is 55 degrees, and we know what our kvar is, and we're going to divide that by our kilowatts. Because remember, uh, the tangent, toa, tan, of the angle equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the tangent of the angle equals the kvar divided by the kilowatts. So, now that we know that, we can take the kilowatts equals the kvar. We're just going to change our equation around um, and times the tangent of 55 degrees. So, our kilowatt equals 44.7.27. Uh, and we can show you on the calculator how that, what that looks like. So here we have 31 kvar times, and we're going to get the tangent of 30, or I'm sorry, the tangent of 55 degrees equals 44.27. So there you go. So next... So now we know our kilowatts, 44.27. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So now we know what two sides of our triangle are. And uh, before that, we'll just, we'll just figure out what our power factor is. We know that our, the cos of our angle equals the power factor. So the cos of 55 degrees is, equals a power factor of 57%. And now we're going to take Pythagoras' theorem again. We know what the a, of the a side of the triangle is. We know what the B side of the triangle is. So if you remember, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're going to square root this side of the triangle or this side of the equation. And then we need to square root that side of the equation. That gives us a KVA of 54. 54 kVA. Let's plug that in. Again, we're going to plug it in in yellow, and I'll explain why a little bit later when we're all done. Now let's move on to our last triangle, our last motor load. We know that we have 10 kW at an angle of 52 degrees. So here we're going to use the cos of the angle, and the cos is equal to the wattage over the volt amperes, or ka, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we're using the cos, watts over VA. All right, we know that the cos, we know what the cos of the angle, we know what the angle is, so it's the cos of 52 degrees. We know that we have a 10 kilowatt motor. So we, what we need to find out is what the KVA is. So again, we're gonna use a little algebra to do that. So KVA, times the cos of 52 degrees equals 10 kV kW. And then we're going to switch that around again. The kVA equals 10 kW divided by the cos of 52 degrees. And that gives us a kVA of 16.39. So there we go. We'll plug that in in yellow again. Our, the cos of the of the angle equals the power factor. So our power factor is 61.6%. So now we're gonna use Pythagoras' theorem one more time. This time we know what the hypotenuse is. We know what the wattage is or the kilowatts is, or that's the adjacent side. So if we take the hypotenuse minus the adjacent side, that'll give us the opposite side. So there we go, we subtracted. Now we need the, 
the square root of our equa of our of our uh, equation, and that gives us twelve point nine eight kvar. So there you have it. We've determined what the the kva of each motor, the kilowatts of each motor, and the kvar of each motor. So now, uh, the what we need to do is we need to make one triangle that represents all these triangles. And the reason we need to do that is we know that this angle equals this angle equals this angle. They're all on a, on a level plane. They're all the same angle. So those values can be added together. Uh, all our K vars are at the same angle. They're at 90 degrees. So all of their K var can be added together. But our KVAs are at different angles from each other. So we can't just add those together. We'll get a wrong answer. So what we'll do is we'll create one triangle. Let's move everything over. And we're going to create one more triangle that represents all three triangles. Um, so let us, let's take, we're going to, if we add all our K, KWs together, 7.46 KW plus 44.27 KW, plus 16.39 kW gives us a gives us a kW of 61.73 for the all three motors. We can do the same thing with our kvar. If we take 11.31 plus 31 plus 12.98, it gives us a total kvar of 55.29. Now we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find out what our kVA is. So Remember, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we'll do that. We'll use Pythagoras' theorem. It gives us 82.87. And finally, we can find out what our power factor is. Power factor equals kW over kVA. kW over kVA. So we divide 61.73 divided by 82.87. Yeah, it comes out to like 74.4%, or something like that. I just rounded it up to 75%. All right. And then we can find our angle by the inverse cos of the power factor. So let me show you how that works. The inverse cos of the power factor. So if you take, if you have your calculator, let's go ahead and clear out our answer. You use second function, cos, which gives us inverse cos. We have a we have a power factor of 0.75 because it's 75%, so that's 0.75. Enter. It gives us an angle of 41.4. Well, it, it does. I round it up here, but uh, this this is actually the what was on the screen. 41.8 was the 74.49%. Uh, so, but it's pretty close. 41 degrees. So there you have it. Now, let's convert this into something we can understand. KVA, we take our total KVA now. Now we know what our total KVA of all three motors is. If we take our KVA and we divide that by the voltage, this is a 480 volt circuit. So if we divide that by 0 0.480, because we're this is all done in thousandths here. So if we divide the 82.87 thousand VA, divided by 0 0.480, that gives us a total ampacity of 172.64 amps. That's how many amps are being consumed by this circuit. Now, what if we could reduce our power factor? If we could reduce our power factor, this triangle is going to reduce its angle. So this distance will be shortened. Okay, so what if we could get to a 90 degree, a 90 percent power factor instead of a 75 percent power factor? How would that help our circuit? Let's take a look. So here we have a much smaller triangle. And our KW is the same. It's still 61.73. That's the amount of work being done. But our KVAR will be much reduced. So all I know is we want a we want a power factor of 90%. And we have a, a, K, a KW of 61.73. Uh, 
uh, we can do an inverse of our power factor, inverse cos of our power factor, and know that our angle is 25.84 degrees. So if we take our power factor, if, actually, if we take our kW and divide it by our power factor, it gives us a kVA of 68.59. Look at our kVA went from 82 kVA to 68 kVA, a big difference. If we can improve our power factor from 75% to 90%. All right, so then we could take, again, Pythagoras' theorem, and we can say c squared minus b squared equals a squared. So we can use that to find that our, that our, our overall kVAR would need to be somewhere around 29 0.89 kVAR, 29.89. So we need to reduce our kVAR from 55, and let's see what the difference is. 55.29 minus 29.89. Enter. That we would need to reduce our kVAR by about 5, 25 kVAR. Okay, and that would improve our circuit. And let's see our amperage would drop from 172 amps to 142 amps. That's 30 amps in difference for three motors. Three motors and we reduced our amperage by 30 amps. Uh, that's quite significant. We also reduced our electric bill quite significantly. If you think these motors ran all day, every day, or if they ran uh, eight hours a day, five days a week, you're saving 30 amps of power. You're saving a ton of wattage over that period of time, which will greatly reduce your electric bill. We could go into how much that would reduce it in another video. So there you have it, how to calculate power factor. It's really, it looks difficult, but it's really not that difficult. And if you can take each load and break it down into their own respective right triangles, it'll make it a lot easier for you. So there you have it, calculating power factor. Access Electric, if you want to subscribe, please click on the button. If you want to get notified, Click on the bell and uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Take care.